Florida has some of the rawest new talent that's come out in the last few years. Its music scene is finally getting the recognition it deserves, but artists are having a hard time sharing the limelight. Glock9 and Hot Boy are two artists we watch blow up, and for a while they were cool with each other. Both are from Orlando, and although to many that's home to Disney World and family vacations, it's also the center of a deadly war that's nearly cost both of them their careers. Says they're going to be looking at all gangs in Orange County, but they're taking a key interest in the gangs 438 and the Army. Orlando police say one of his intended targets was 20 year old Jaquarius Smith, known as Glock 9. High school football coach is speaking out after one of his star players was shot and killed. The 18 year old. Tonight, a second arrest in last week's shooting at the mall at Millennia. Orlando police say the gunfire is part of a gang feud. Orange County investigators tell me this is a street battle that started over rap music, but now at least six people are dead as a result. That shit is crazy though. Jacavia Smith or Glock 9 was raised by a single mother while his dad was in and out of prison. He started getting into trouble at a young age and it hasn't stopped since. But he's always had a passion for music and he's been rapping since 9 years old. Using an iPad and downloading GarageBand was all it took for him to start his career, until hopping into his first real studio at the age of 15. He finally released his first official song in 2017 titled Ugly, but was still dealing with legal issues. But after being arrested 12 times before the age of 18, he wrote his mother a letter from inside his cell that said he was going to blow up when he got home. Less than one year later, he was pulling over 30 million views and inking a deal with none other than Cash Money Records for $2 million. Meanwhile, on the west side of Orlando, Lavari Walker, or Hot Boy as we know him, was sitting in a jail cell. He was plotting on his next move once he was released. Although Hot Boy didn't blow up yet, he had already been making a name for himself since his song Switcheroo got some traction while he was still in high school. This proved he already knew the talent was there, but while spending two years in a correctional facility, he realized how important his freedom was. Once released in 2018, watching the success other Florida artists were seeing, he got straight to work. He released his first music video, Life of a Dog, which immediately gave him some buzz again. Make no mistake though, Hot Boy didn't get his name for nothing and was still in the streets with his gang, 438. You would think with multiple artists from the area blowing up at the same time, they would come together and put on for the city. And for a while that was the case, but it was quickly shut down after all hell broke loose. Hot Boy claims Glock 9 was getting jealous of the shine he was now getting, and he wanted to be the only artist from Orlando that was popping. It's unclear who initiated the beef first, but the two started taking shots at one another online. Soon after, both AFNF and 438 were in a full-on gang war. How did that affect you? Like, that shit was kind of crazy. At the same time, Wolf had just died. In April of 2020s, deputies responded to a report of shots fired at a house party in Davenport. But when they arrived, they couldn't find the victim. It was later reported the man who was shot, Wolf Luther King Luma, had already been dropped off at the hospital. He died from his injuries later that day. It was revealed Wolf was an associate of Hot Boys 438 gang. His killer, Demetrius Cox, was an AFNF associate. Now that blood had been shed, it was highly unlikely things would be resolved, and it only got worse as the conflict continued. A funeral was set up for Wolf later that month, where Hot Boy and most of 438 would be in attendance. During the funeral, Hot Boy filmed the music video for his hit song, Don't Need Time, where 438 is all seen wearing black suits. The song would gain over 70 million views. What wasn't caught on camera though was the deadly shooting that also took place that night. The 18-year-old uh, Dexter Rents was a graduating senior here at Okoe High School bound for college in the fall, but he never got that chance. Orlando police right now say they're working this case and working to figure out what happened. AFNF still wanted to send a message to 438 that they weren't playing about this beef. That night, they pulled up to a house where some 438 were staying and started spraying bullets at everyone in sight before pulling off. Four people were injured during the crossfire, and one was fatally shot. 
The man who died to his wounds was Dexter Rents Jr., who had no gang affiliation and was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was an innocent football star with a promising college career. The man suspected of the shooting was AFNF Jeremiah Robertson, and Orlando police began an investigation on him. Before police could convict Jeremiah, he was still on the streets raining havoc. In July, he and another AFNF member, Jermaine, pulled up to a house where Hot Boy's right-hand man, Van Sean Sands, was living. Van Sean was stepping out of his car getting home when Jeremiah and Jermaine pulled up next to him and opened fire. He was ready for the attack and he pulled out a rifle returning shots, shooting Jeremiah in the head and Jermaine in the hand. At this point, neither Hot Boy or Glock 9 was directly involved in any action, but their gangs were going at each other's necks. Hot Boy would reference this event in his song Left Lonely. It's important to note that both Glock 9 and Hot Boy's music careers were elevating to new heights from these altercations. Whether it was indirect or not, the views were pouring in. But it was only a matter of time before everyone was in danger, even family. Just days after the shootout with Van Sean, police were called to another home in Orlando. Glock 9's car was parked outside, covered in shell casings. He had already left the scene and was now plotting his next hit. The target was another Orlando rapper, Cut Em Reese. Allegedly, Glock 9, his right-hand man Ballpark, and six other men pulled up to a home in two black trucks. They opened fire on Cutem Reese's house, letting off over a hundred rounds. What they didn't know was that Cutem wasn't even there, but his mother and sister were. They both survived and even later gave an eyewitness testimony that they saw Glock 9 and Ballpark hop out of the cars before shots went off. It came to light they were able to positively ID them because they were all actually related. Cutem Reese, Glock 9, and Ballpark were technically family but now none of that mattered. It was rumored that Glock 9's motive was to eliminate the competition because Cut'em was blowing up at the time. This initiated a warrant for Glock 9's arrest. Cut'em Reese and 438 wasted no time getting back. Days later, they pulled up to Glock 9's aunt's house where he was sleeping, and they left it filled with bullet holes, but nobody was hurt again. In a span of a few months, the entire city of Orlando saw a dramatic increase in murders, including the death of young teens and even a three-year-old. The Orlando Police Department immediately got to work on finding a solution. They created an entire task force called Operation X, whose sole intention was to bring down Orlando's most wanted gangs. At the top of their list was no other than AFNF and 438. Phone taps, surveillance, and informants were all involved in the investigation. The issue was they needed solid evidence before they could really go after everyone they wanted to get. This meant for months, the war continued while they built a case. Well, just within the last couple of minutes, uh, I've confirmed with Orlando police that shots were fired here at the mall at Millennia. They were not fired by Orlando police officers. And the good news is nobody was injured in all this. But I can tell you, driving in, every entrance to the mall at Millennia right now is locked down, sealed down. Nobody is getting inside. In October, 438 members were leaving the luxury mall of Millennia when they got into a white BMW. As they were leaving, they spotted Glock 9 and three other AFNF members in the parking lot. On site, they let shots off while both sides ducked for cover behind cars. Pedestrians scattered the scene. Nobody was hit or injured again, but this gave the Orlando police even more motive to expedite their investigation. It's a whole other issue when you start to bring these type of altercations to public places with hundreds of innocent people around. Because Glock 9 already had a warrant for his arrest, he was taken into custody and charged for carrying a firearm as a felon. They ran tests on his gun and discovered his weapon was involved in multiple other crimes in the area. As the feds built their case, it opened up a whole new world of what was actually going on. Informants were reporting back daily with new information about the workings of the gangs. They informed police to move quickly, as they were now aware that there were multiple hits on people's heads for money. Both sides were running things like an organized mob. They uncovered lists of all their members in the hierarchy chain of command. Text and Instagram messages revealed countless conversations about smuggling money, guns, drugs, and details of the entire operations they were running. Internet browser history showed Google searches for specific shootings. This was no longer just about two gangs going back and forth. They felt the criminal activity was so severe and organized that they wanted to come after them with one of their most powerful tools, the RICO. This meant the punishment for their crimes would also be more severe. Uh, the folks involved in this activity were rappers and they were just part of a clique. Um, these are violent criminals involved in violent gang activity.
After a nine month long investigation, three dozen people were picked up by police on a variety of charges from racketeering to drug trafficking. Glock 9 was sentenced to seven years for identity theft and a weapons charge, but he still faces a second degree murder case in his racketeering trial. Hot Boy is currently out on bond, but also facing trial soon, leaving the future of both these artists' careers in question.